but just a lot, a lot of stuff happening at RWA, of course. Um, I know you were a part of that big um, incident a couple of months ago. We had the Rev on. Uh, and, and actually, no, actually, now I'm thinking about it. You were called out when the Rev was on after uh, the last RWA show. Was I? Oh, yeah, that's right. Nick. I was accused of hiding under the ring. Yes. Uh, for those who don't remember, after the uh, last RWA show was in November, uh, they weren't able to have a December show after all the calamity that happened after the uh, J-Rock and uh, O'Shea Edwards match and everything just, just kind of uh, fell apart after that for the most part, right? Um, but, uh, but, but, but so you were out there in the brawl. I saw you going at great Alexander for a little bit. And then we did find video evidence shortly after that of, of, of you. And I love, there was like an illustration. I forget who did it, like circling you with your head outside, peeking out, out from under the, under, under the skirt, if you will. And, uh, I mean, what is, what is your side of the story there? That, that, I think the quality of that video is is terrible. It was a fan it, cam. It, 2020. Yeah, it's terrible. They were using their flip phone. It was it was horrible. No, that's the for promoter. You, for, okay, for those of you that don't know, flip phones they go like this, and then you talk on them, but <laughs> you can't do any of the fun stuff like look on the internet. It's just a phone, but and they had a camera. It was terrible. But uh, yeah, no, that that doesn't even look like me. It's all distorted and everything. No, that's. That's ridiculous. Who no, could have been? Absurd. Who could have been on that on that I roster? I have no there? idea. It was probably uh, Jacob Edwin. That's who it was. It had you to know, Jacob Edwin. I, I will say, I believe you, Justin. Thank you. Because that Thanks. guy, he pretends to be a professor, and he's not. So I could absolutely see him hiding under a ring skirt. Exactly. exactly. He's a phony. He's yep. a exactly. big fat phony. That's true. I want to see his certificate, his teaching certificate, or whatever oh, they get. I oh, don't, I don't Justin, I've asked repeatedly. Oh, yeah. Repeatedly, I ran that man off the show. Yes. Oh, yes. That's right. He did a, I, he did a segment with you with you guys. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, exactly. You know what kind of character he is. And yep. It was probably Jacob. It definitely was not me. <laughs> Rev, what an idiot. Uh, yeah, Rev and me, we don't get along really well. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do? But anywho, yeah. So anywho, but but I was fined actually because of um, like a few of us got fined for damaging the building. Someone damaged some of your equipment, huh, Sword? Yeah, was yeah. I uh, wasn't happy about that. I got uh, J Rock was throwing around uh, some of our headsets, and uh, I, I had to take care of that. Still waiting on the uh, the bill, the, the the response to the bill for that one. So I don't, I'm <laughs> hoping we don't have another Bobby Fish situation here. Right. So. Yeah. Tad Jarvis, I think, threw one of your speakers. Yes. Yes. Um, but then I got accused of uh, damaging some of the chairs, and because I, I I don't know I think it's just because they they caught certain guys doing certain things on camera, and we just happen to be the scapegoats. Like someone's got to go down for it. Here's these particular guys doing these heinous things, so we're gonna punish them. I mean, I guess I understand the point. It sucks, but I'll pay the fine and all. But whatever, you know, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, whatever. As long as the rev got fined too, that's all I care. About. I, I think, can't believe he broke the concession stand. All those people in West Newton, where are they going to get their chips now? Their chips and soda. How are they going to eat? I mean, yeah, the uh, the the Orion Edmonds uh, Memorial concession stand. Um, and again, to reiterate, so so there there was a big three man suplex happening on there, and it was a giant oak table. And I did find footage. I was actually tuned into the live stream over at the IndieWrestling.us uh, YouTube page where we show a lot of old shows and i saw like dennis gregory and i think ryan mitchell fighting and one of them gets suplexed on like the other table by the entrance which is basically like the same kind of big oak thing and i'm like that thing didn't budge <laughs> okay <laughs> and that, that those guys <laughs> broke that one and they didn't like bust it it just went like that like it just <laughs> moved right it's just it's just not as structurally sound as it used to be i have a feeling it's completely usable right i'm sure somebody's grandma made that 20 years ago 50 years ago whatever i don't know <laughs> I, I, it was posted on the rwa page recently there was a video the rev of his the rev's apology video oh i haven't what seen this yet yeah, what is this is he the only one that apologized because i'm pretty sure both australia and, and j-rock are like both f this um, no, yeah, I don't know. They want they asked me to, and I, I, I might, but I don't know. Just to save face, you know. But uh, yeah, but the Rev obviously is the first one, Mister Mister 
Mr. Rev. I'm not gonna say it. No, no, no. I think he's a phony. I've been saying it for years. <laughs> on the show, I've said on other in other promotions. I don't know. Well, I, so you're really involved with uh, with with uh, uh, yeah. RWA, of course, mm-hmm. and um, and and I I got to talk about a little bit about because I know uh, working with you with uh, uh previous with Fight Underground, and I know you're working on some other projects. Um, I I want I want to point out like the appreciation for how much you have gone into um content creation around pro wrestling. Um, I mean, you are uh, what are you a twenty plus year vet in in, in the business here? Twenty. Three years. Twenty-three now. years. Yeah. And, this and, month, no, no, I'm the tenth of this month. And, and and I know we've had a lot of conversations uh, um, over the last couple of years here about things like you've really like like between the videos, between the social media, like you've really kind of taken and and, and latched onto a lot of these. Can you tell a little about like it's kind of a, a a little bit of a wrestling media renaissance for you? It seems. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's, I'm getting older in the business, and I just, it's it's kind of my way to stay you know, in the business, you know, um, mm-hmm. like obviously I can, I can get bookings and everything, but my body's getting older, you know, I'm getting older, my body's getting much older and it's just, it's, it, and I have a passion for, you know, content creation, right? obviously like you do, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, and it's not at the level of you obviously, but it's something I've always had a passion about doing. And now that my wrestling is slowing down, my bookings are slowing down. I can, it gives me more time to focus on this kind of like a hobby or anything also gives you a little bit of a break too because i can do some graphics you know and now you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff you know (laughs) so but uh yeah i like doing it it's kind of like a hobby you know Mm -hmm. it's it's more like a hobby i actually have a lot of hobbies that and i also do thrifting um you know things like that so there's a lot more time opening up because i've been taking a lot less bookings but it's definitely a passion project that's for sure so so of course we know you know uh friends of ours in the business uh, like Lee Morardi, I know he's a guy that um, I think I don't know if he went to school for, it, but he was really big into graphic design and video, and and, and was learning stuff. And I was like, I remember one time I talked to him. He's like, he's like, yeah, I'm doing all my videos in After Effects, and I'm like, why, why do you hate yourself? Because uh, he was doing just video editing, and and that's if you know, you know, it's not the easiest to just to just do uh, uh, video editing in like he was doing and he was doing some really great stuff. Uh, so what, from what you've learned, what do you see as the value of, of kind of media creation for the up and comers, uh, 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 in wrestling right now? Um, th- before I get to that, Lee is actually the one who designed my one cool cat logo. Oh, nice. Yeah. He's the, yeah. And I, I, mean, I paid him for it and everything. He wanted to do it with, you know, he's just such a nice guy. And he was like, no, 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 don't worry about it. And I'm like, no, absolutely you're gonna pay you for it because you did a service you know mm-hmm. everyone should do that um especially for a friend you should always want to pay a friend you know try to help them out like support it's like smart supporting small business you know well lee's now big business now so, yes he is um <laughs> now we're all asking lee for loans <laughs> right? um, yeah but i definitely with with all the apps that are out there and free versions you know you should absolutely you know learn how to use these these uh, apps these video editing software everything go on youtube uh take a free class no it's not a class but watch tutorials that's probably the better word uh you absolutely should because the this is the age of social media um mm-hmm. you should always be you know you could you're you're only as good as you make yourself look no one's gonna do it for you so i would take advantage of every everything anything everything and anything you can like my basement at yeah, 23 years in at 40 years old, I have a green screen in my basement just against one wall, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and it's the great thing about my basement is I have like eight walls down there. So I only have one wall taken up. So that's, it's not that bad, you know? Uh, I think a lot of people would spare one wall. Um, there's nothing I hate more than seeing someone cut a promo in front of like a bookshelf, you know, <laughs> with, you know, the Twilight Saga hanging out behind them, you know, a kitty litter box over their left shoulder, you know? It's kind of like, whoa, wow, okay, this is this is some serious stuff right here, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, (laughs) But yeah, I just, I believe you should definitely take advantage of these situations. They're not hard to learn. The simple software, the simple apps, they're very easy to learn. Um, But yeah, everyone should take advantage of it. They should all, everyone should be doing it. It should be part of the training. (laughs) I I think it's part of that because I know one big thing we talk about is um, we have, you know, Riz is in the chat, in the uh, chat on the Twitch page, uh, saying iPhone vertical uh, car phone video promos. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I had to send a little note to somebody that kept sending me vertical videos. I'm like, 
hey, can we turn the phone <laughs> the other way? Like, I can work around it, but... <laughs> <laughs> so it's like most of figure that out these days it's like hey well, this is for tiktok or it's not you know which is funny because then i end up putting them on tiktok anyways um uh it, it actually funny you should say this we're actually i i've got i was going to do it over the holiday but i got a little busy um we're actually going to do um a, i'm going to do a video um tutorial because everybody's got one of these right um you know iphone android whatever uh, i think you're an android person right so I am, yes. So yes. so so Android for life. You all even if you have if you have an iPhone and it has the most recent OS, if you've got an Android and video quality can be a little bit weird um every once in a while, but like you have everything you need right here to do things. Um so we're we're looking like you know, make your own gifts, make your own clips, make your own highlight videos right on like free stuff on the phone for the most part. Or cheap. Or cheap. Like there's not too many apps that you need that would be more than ten dollars. So yeah, um, I recommend Kind Master. That's the one I use a lot when I'm on my cell phone. Kind Master, K I N E Master, and mm -hmm. I pay it's like twenty dollars a year. You know, I, and they I, have... I've seen that with the watermark for the people that haven't paid it. Yeah, I'm like, it's twenty bucks a year. <laughs> I'm like, Are you bro, me? like, bro, invest in yourself. Throw you know? it. To, yeah, yes, it, it's not even <laughs> like it's not like dropping hundreds of dollars to get T-shirts for the for the table, right? It's twenty dollars right. for a year. Uh, and right. something that you're going to use and learn and, and, and create. And even that, like iMovie, you know, I, at least on the iPhone side, right? Uh, uh, Adobe Rush, uh, things like that are, are really easy to pick up and do the, the, the most minimal thing to get you going. And then you'll learn the next thing. And then you'll learn the next thing is the baby steps. What's the little things that you can do, right? Yeah. So um, with that, I, I also, so, so I wanted to dip a little bit into, um, you're also doing Dungeons and Dragons. I think we're, uh, say, I know we got, we had a cancellation in, in the last month because uh, uh, we, you know, we somebody had uh, got sick. So we wanted to make sure everybody's safe and everything, especially around the holidays. Um, I, I feel like everybody on Awesome Cast, like half the people on Awesome Cast apparently got sick over the holidays. So it's, um, you know, so everybody be careful out there. But but you've been working with D&D. Um, this has been another, uh, I, I'm guessing this is another one of your hobbies too. Uh, working with us coming in here doing Top Rope Tabletop with uh, Keith Hodd as the Dungeon Master and of course Tatiana, Tyler Klein and, 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 and a few more. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about that. I, I think we've had you on here talking about it before. Um, but, 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 but why does that make so much sense? And why should people check it out later in the month when we uh, finally get this date confirmed? Well, I don't, I mean, Dungeons and Dragons goes with wrestling, just like video games goes with wrestling. It's mm -hmm. just, you know, we're all a big bunch of nerds, you know, um, nerds, you know, I don't know. Yes. Dungeons. I don't know. If you've never played Dungeons and Dragons, it's, it's something that it's, it's, essentially another it's just another form of entertainment mm -hmm. you know, wrestlers are going out there um the undertaker i'm sorry to break this to you people he's not really dead i know it's tough <laughs> i know it comes as a shock what? i know calm down calm down calm down he's just a man acting dead i don't see yeah, near the end of his career i don't even know if he considered himself a dead man anymore. you gotta keep but, face brother you can't tell people yeah, that shit. i know i know but you know it's just like dungeons and dragons is the same thing you're going out there and you're just you're playing a character you know um but this time with Top Rope Tabletop, as you guessed it, it's with a lot of wrestlers, uh, a lot of local indie wrestlers. They go out there and we're playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Keith Hot is our dungeon master, uh, for or the storyteller is the best way probably to put it, the simplest way to put it. Other member and the members of the actual game are uh, Tyler Klein, uh, let's see, uh, uh, Gideon, <laughs> Gideon, which is um, the bard, Tony Kincaid. <laughs> Yeah, Tony Kincaid. I've been calling him Bard for so long, my mind just drew a blank. I just call him Bard. Uh, myself, uh, Tatiana, and Brohemian. Um, and occasionally we'll have a guest, or we've been trying to have guests, but things have been coming up and have prevented that. Mm -hmm. But And it's been difficult with COVID and everything. But it's definitely very entertaining. Uh, it's just like watching a Mayhem show. There's a lot of jokes being cracked, a little inside jokes. A lot of uh, sexual innuendos, Ronnie, you know, things like that. You know, it's just, it's a good time. You should definitely turn into it at least once just to see, so you can decide and make an educated guess if you like it or not. Mm -hmm. You had me at sexual innuendos. See, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you heard how he came into the show, right? I mean, exactly. come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> 
Um, but anyways, uh, no. So look at this top rope tabletop. Um, it, what has been the biggest surprise for you with top rope tabletop so far? Man, other than schedule, how, other than scheduling being so hard. Yeah, other than yeah, no, no, yeah, no. Um, I'm surprised at how much I genuinely like it. You know, I never. This is my first time playing Dungeons and Dragons. I've done role playing before, top, like ta I've done tabletop games before. Um, Cyberpunk was what I used to play back in the day. Um, but this is my first time playing Dungeons and Dragons. It took some getting used to, but I'm actually just surprised at how much I genuinely like it. And you see uh, here and see a lot of celebrities play this. I mean, the big show, mm -hmm. he plays, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of wrestlers play, um, a lot of actors play. Uh, it's, 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 I think I, the biggest shock for me was I didn't think that I'd be into it as much as I truly am, you know? Um, there was, I was who, who was it? I was having an argument with someone about, I was like, the girl I was dating, I was talking to her saying how I'm a nerd. She's like, no, you're not. I was like, yeah, I am. She's like, you're not a nerd. You look, you know, you're cute. And you don't, you know, you're not a nerd. And I said something. She said, you're not a nerd again. And finally, I was just like, I play Dungeons and Dragons. And she was like, okay, you're a nerd. You know, and I wear that with a badge of honor. I love it, you know, because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's genuinely fun. Uh, it's such a good time. Everyone should be playing it. Absolutely. Uh, I, I'll let you know that I did, while I was uh, going through some stuff in the house the other day, came across my Vampire Dark Ages book. So oh. I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, so if anybody else knows how to DM that stuff, I'm, a, I'm, I'm familiar. It's probably the longest campaign I ever worked on was was that one, more than Dungeons oh. & Dragons. I've only dropped into Dungeons & Dragons here and there. So, yeah. 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 What's, is that one of the campaigns? Uh, no, it's a whole other thing. There's a vampire stuff. Um, was, I don't know if you were the, probably more popular is Vampire the Masquerade, I think is, okay. is a kind of spinoff of that. So, um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of fun. It was kind of fun. And our DM at the time, like, uh, was really good with voices. So mm -hmm. we still, we still pop some jokes from back then. Um, I would like to try, I would like to try DMing. I think I could be a good storytelling be good. at storytelling. I Keith is just fantastic. I, I, I would like to give it a shot. I still want to do the wrestling RPG that uh, we we had the uh, we had the I have I have digital copies of it and um, uh, we had the, the the maker of it and he does several RPG games um, um, you know several years ago so and, and I think uh, he did a session with us too uh, on Google Hangout I think that we played um, that was a lot of fun so but that, that was kind of the idea which came into that where we were starting to have this conversation because I always wanted to get wrestlers together to do the wrestling RPG and see how that came out under the under that system right so um, and Riz is, Riz is confirming in the in the Twitch chat he's like yes yes we did do that <laughs> so it's yeah, over it's, it's over on the YouTube somewhere Extreme Warfare Revenge no I will have to look it up and uh, and tell you what the name is. Uh, look oh, up. it was years ago. Yeah, it was years ago. I was going to say, I was jealous because I wanted to be a part of it, but I was, you know, had to kind of be there. That's how long. Well, no, no, you did. We did it over Google Hangout. Cause, oh, should, maybe, uh... maybe I was working then or something. Yeah, I think you were working or something. I think it's. I think that was the. Actually, yeah, it's it's probably so long ago where I was working my night job. But the, 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 yeah, the night, the hiatus uh, era of uh, Mad Mike on the show, right? So. Um, and, that, and, and for some people, those are the best times. <laughs> Especially Dixie Carter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was. Just, we should. Uh, we should start a. Uh, a efed and have wait, everybody role play. Oh my god, that's that's have been fun. thrown around have for quite fun. a while. That's that's a you guys project. I don't got the bandwidth for that one. Uh, I haven't efed in a long time. Jeez, I'm uh, I'm looking at my Google Drive to see. Ronnie, I got I gotta send you some of my old efed stuff. I'll find mine and send it to you too. <laughs> I I have merch from my e fitting character. I do too. <laughs> on that note, Justin Idol, oh, one cool cat on all the so all social media, or one cool cat forever. I think on a couple of them too. Is that right? Yeah, most of it now is all because I like. I think that's another thing. Uh, if you, wrestlers out there, you try to get your handles all the same as close as possible. To yes. The same. Yes. It's very frustrating when you have multiple, yeah. But it's One Cool Cat Forever on Facebook and Instagram, and it's One Cool Cat Forever because Twitter wouldn't let me have any more likes. So on Twitter, yeah. <laughs> there you go. And, of course, you're going to be a part of, I believe, of the uh, – the, uh, is it the 13th anniversary of Renegade Wrestling Alliance coming up here on January 22nd in West Newton, Pennsylvania? Yes, I will be there. I don't 
know if I'm booked on the show. I think that's kind of one of my uh, one of my punishments. So uh, okay, okay. I don't know for sure. It's been I've been in talks with Derek, and I might be being punished, you know. But um, I will be there, but I may not have a match. But I don't know. It's still, so still, still up in the air. We'll see what happens. By the way, I, I just to follow up on our, our conversation earlier, I did find that RPG. Uh, if you go to Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com and you look actually if you look up if you just type in rpg <laughs> so, um you can you'll find worldwide wrestling the role-playing game uh we have an interview with nathan paoletta uh that that put the game together and then uh we have a let's play uh worldwide wrestling uh and it's an, a role-playing game uh session we did with nathan actually dming his own game so um, that's <laughs> it's it's from February of 2016, and we interviewed him November of 2015. And there's been an expansion pack since, I believe. I think I got it off a of Kickstarter actually, and you can check that out at ndpdesign.com. Let's make sure that domain still works. 2016. <laughs> 2016, yeah. Yeah, that's. You trying to figure out where you were? That's definitely several jobs ago. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, that was eight. Years. I actually thought it would have been longer. When you were what you were talking about, it, I thought it was going to be longer than that. Yeah, I, I thought it was too. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, the last two years feel like a decade. So um, that's fair. I mean, that's really, fair. I mean, really. Yeah, and yeah, true. they do. That's they true. actually have a second edition you can get. Uh, 